Hey guys, my name is Mercy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here. I am a recent graduate. Actually, my graduation ceremony is coming up next month, but I'm completely done with uh, medical school. I finished my last rotation in the United Kingdom. Yeah, so I'm done and done. So my intentions are to build a relationship with you guys, teach you about topics that your family physician or your doctors um, don't really have the time to sit down and talk to you about so that whenever you go to your doctors, you will have a better understanding and not feel like they're just like blabbing and then you're just like nodding and then you leave the appointment and you're just like what the hell just happened and that actually begins this video so this is a women's health video this is going to go under my women's health playlist uh, where I'm going to be talking about a lot of women's health <laughs> I actually made a blog post uh, in regards to it where you'll get a lot of the information that I'm saying on there now I want to start off by saying that this is a sponsored video now, before you X out please don't my intentions are to make sure I teach like that is what I love to do because I think that's so important and that is what I'm gonna do and then at the very end I'm going to talk about alternative ways to treat it as well so there you go and let's do some learning okay after doing ob gyn rotation i'm very comfortable with saying certain words so if you're uncomfortable hearing them know that i am in the medical field and <laughs> i have been really desensitized uh so i apologize if uh, some of the words kind of make you cringe but it's important to get comfortable with the body part that you have it's not a big deal so you're having itching burning irritation this abnormal discharge what is going on with you Okay, I'm going to kind of give you a better understanding. You're going to seem so smart with whenever you talk to your friends. So after we hit puberty, the estrogen levels increase, right? During puberty, we are, our estrogen or hormone levels are going to increase. And that estrogen actually affects the vaginal wall and it's going to cause an increase in production of glycogen. And glycogen actually allows for this specific bacteria called lactobacillus to grow. And this is a good bacteria. Remember, in the stomach, in our bodies in general, we need the good bacteria to live to um, outsmart or outweigh the bad bacteria because there's uh, the good and the bad. So not all bacteria are bad. Lactobacillus bacilli is around and it's protecting the vaginal wall. For example, if you are someone that douches, I don't know why I did that, but if you douche, so you clean out your vagina you, by rinsing it and using all these products, you're actually harming yourself and it's not really helping because what you're doing is essentially getting rid of the good bacteria as well. And you don't want to do that. Don't do that. You don't need to go above and beyond and clean that. Your your body's cleaning it on its own. Whenever you someone does a douching, and they often do it, but you're going to clear out those good uh, bacteria, uh, again, called lactobacilli, and therefore you're definitely prone to then getting back to a vaginosis. So now the vagina is also an acidic environment. So the normal acidity levels between 3.5 and 4.5. And if you go above 4.5, then this would indicate a really bad environment, basically. The bad bacteria that grows more and then it causes your infection. Basically, your vagina should be at a, an acidic level. So it's important to pay attention to your body because you know what's normal and then whenever things go slightly out abnormal then you you realize that oh wait something's going on because catching that is important so now if you have a certain smell and then now like it's a different smell and you're just like well what is it and if it's bad anytime it's bad it's usually means it's most likely an infection so in someone that has bacterial vaginosis the pH is actually greater than 4.5 if you have greater than 4.5 that gives a pertin positive towards um, towards a, an infection Let's go ahead and discuss what is causing this and what you can do next. There are three that you probably bumped into in Google. So there's the bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis, which is actually also a sexually transmitted disease, and there is your candidiasis, which is your yeast infection. The bacterial vaginosis can look very similar to STD, so it's important, once again, to make sure that you have it diagnosed properly. The doctor's gonna know exactly what the diagnosis is by doing a test and then therefore once you understand what the diagnosis is, you can get it treated. So that when you treat it, you're treating the right diagnosis. Now, if you were a person that has been having this for a long time now, then you that's different because you know exactly what's going on. You know your diagnosis. So first of all, discharges. There are different types. There's, so there's the clear discharge that you can normally have and it's fine. If you have this fishy smell, then there's a problem. Usually any bad smell is 
no good okay so if you have a bad smell that means something is going on with someone that has bacterial vaginosis it's a very a thin white like discharge it's not colorful usually but most often it's just a thin white consistency and it has a fishy smell usually and then if you have like yeast infection it's gonna be a thicker white and it's gonna be like chunky like white discharge and if you have trichomoniasis it's gonna be like a yellow green discharge okay so let's talk about bacterial vaginosis it happens and it's not really known why it's happening it's not a, uh, an std so it's not a sexually transmitted disease um it is one that actually often occurs in those that are sexually active but it's not a sexually transmitted disease there are women that have bacterial vaginosis and they're not sexually active it's not as as high your vagina normally has these good bacteria that's there and with someone that has bacterial vaginosis those good bacteria are actually not there as much as the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria is increasing and the good bacteria is declining and the pH level is imbalanced so normally the vagina is uh, an acidic environment but it has turned more basic and it's above a 4.5 pH level. So this is getting that uh, bad bacteria to grow even more and therefore causing all these um, uncomfortable symptoms. Bacterial vaginosis requires antibiotics. So the antibiotics that's used, it's called metronidus also known as flagell, the generic name is metronidazole. And then whenever you go to your doctors to get this diagnosed, they will get like a sample of the secretions and uh, they'll look it under the microscope and they'll see, or they'll stain it and they'll see clue cells. So staining it, we'll see these particular clue cells which will indicate a diagnosis. They might also check the pH level and the pH level is just going to add to the diagnosis. So it will be higher than 4.5. And the discharge with bacterial vaginosis is this thin, white, consistent consistency. Commonly it's uh, described as a fishy smell. It doesn't have to necessarily be a fishy smell for you to think it's bacterial vaginosis. It's, any sort of smell is usually bad. It means there is a sort of infection going on, but a fishy smell runs towards uh, bacterial vaginosis. So what do you do with bacterial vaginosis? You can get treated with antibiotics. Now someone that has it chronically, meaning that you'll have it so often, it's really important to have preventative care. And then it could occur again we're going to discuss the recurrence later, but let's go ahead and get to the yeast infection. So yeast infection, it's also known as uh, candiasis. Uh, this is a, a fungal infection, and essentially you'll have the itchiness, the irritation, the discharge. The discharge, though, is going to be more chunkier white. It's almost uh, described as, or it is described as cottage cheese-like. Uh, but that's the discharge that usually uh, happens with yeast infection and yeast infection often can occur in those that are on antibiotics so if you are for example if you're on metronidazole then you can be prone to getting yeast infection so if you just got over uh, your metronidazole uh, to treat your bacterial vaginosis it could increase your risk of getting yeast infection it can happen and sometimes the doctor will prescribe both of them together so that you don't suffer from a yeast infection the next week. Why? Because well, someone that's on antibiotics are more prone to it because it's going to attack some of the good bacteria as well and it's going to strip away those uh, good bacteria which will then lead to uh, that imbalancement in the good bacteria and that could lead to your um, yeast infection. Yeast infection is also not a sexually transmitted disease. It's a fungal called candiasis uh, albicans and that's the most common one. And there are other type of candiasis that it could be causing. Um, I don't I can't say the name, so I'm not going to even try. But the albicans, candiasis albicans, is the most common. The pH with candiasis is going to appear as normal. So if you have yeast infection, you will still have a normal pH. So the treatment for this is an antifungal infection, um, and it's, uh, it's going to always end in with azole. <laughs> now the chances of them recurring is going to happen. That's something to uh, remember. And the treatment for this is an antifungal medication, so that's going to attack the fungal infection infection that's occurring and the chances of it coming back is pretty high within the about 3 to 12 months. And then you have trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis is a sexually transmitted disease and that's why it's super important that if this is the first time you're having this is to go see your doctor to make sure it's diagnosed 
properly because if you have trichomoniasis you need to have your partner be treated as well because they're gonna just give it right back as soon as you're uh, done with the treatment and you're all better hey I'm good and now you're not because you got reinfected again so it's really important to make sure that your partner is treated with this one and the only way that you know it's trichomoniasis is by getting it diagnosed properly by your doctor. So similarly, you'll have the itchiness, the, uh, the discomfort, the irritation, and it will also have that discharge. Now the discharge is also going to have a strong smell, so it's going to be different than the usual. It's, it smells really bad, but it's not really fishy-like, but it is a smell. It's very... Mm, and this one is going to be yellow green in color so this one is also treated with antibiotics and they're going to get a sample of the secretion they're going to put it under the microscope they, and they're going to see the little things moving around uh, within the little sample that they got in order to get the, rid of that you have to be treated accordingly so bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis, and yeast infection are no fun for sure now if you are one that has this often so you know exactly what's going on you have all the signs and symptoms that you've had before whenever you had this before you use the antibiotics and it has returned in a couple of months or several months later and you just don't want to constantly be on antibiotics and it's actually not good to be on antibiotics so chronically you really need to work on preventative because being on antibiotics is no bueno like i said if you're on antibiotics you're going to get an yeast infection so let's say you have bacterial vaginosis and you're on antibiotics you're trying to eliminate that now you're prone to getting yeast infection period if you have this often enough you need to maybe look at alternative things and the alternative thing is actually what i'm going to be talking about now the research isn't too extensive yet and i think as the years goes by we're going to really have a good solid understanding of it what i'm going to introduce to you guys has been uh, indicated in CDC's uh, guidelines and I'll actually link the website to that please go talk to your doctor before using any form of over-the-counter medication to try to treat it yourself and if you are going to the doctors and you are using something over-the-counter it's going to interfere with the test now if you really know that this is what you've had previously this can be a way that you could try to eliminate bacterial vaginosis or um, yeast infection. With bacterial vaginosis, essentially what it does is this is going to bring back the pH to its normal level, to the acidic level. It has uh, antiviral and antifungal effects, so it will help with yeast infection. So it is not one th that you take orally. You have to use a suppository, which is basically, it's kind of like whenever you insert a tampon, so you have this applicator to insert the tampon in so similarly this applicator is going to insert this so this is called boric acid this is actually going to bring down the acidity within the vagina so it's called boric life it's made by a company called Nutriblast and it's all natural um, it supports the pH it supports uh, vaginal health so basically what you're going to be doing is taking just one tablet and putting it in for about 7 to 14 days you're going to uh, insert it at the time of um, having the uh, bacterial vaginosis or you could do it so that you're using it twice a week so to prevent bacterial vaginosis and what you essentially do is put one of these in the applicator and then insert it just like you would in a tampon but uh, go in as far as you can that's comfortable you don't want to kill yourself there <laughs> please um and then you just uh deposit it in it's gonna sit there overnight and you want to wear panty liners and you'll have some discharge again before you use it make sure you consult your uh, gynecologist or your uh, family physician and again i would like to really stress out the fact that this is not uh something that you're gonna take in it's very toxic if you do it that way it's something that's supposed to go into your uh, vagina using uh, an applicator you can also buy this uh, from their website this is a uh, test which can test your pH so for example let's say you're kind of not feeling normal down there or you just want to check the pH level you can go ahead and take the test strip and kind of check it out and see how it is and then see what the pH level is and if it's above 4.5 you can um, also insert it that way to get it back to normal so it doesn't get to that level where you have the itchiness the, that discomfort that discharge now so if you are one that gets it you could uh, use these test strips and if you want to know further information go ahead and check out some of the links that I have in the description box to uh, that talks about Bark Life these are individually bought so you have the 30 vaginal suppositories here 
there and then you have the applicator as well that you're going to buy separately and then you also have the test strips which I dropped. <laughs> So this is an alternative way to treat bacterial vaginosis and yeast infection. For someone that has trichomoniasis and um, the normal antibiotics is not covering and you've been treating your partner and all that, and this is actually has been looked into as um, being a, something to uh, use potentially to help. I tend to talk a lot and I really want to uh, make sure that I'm helping you guys. Let me know if you guys have any comments or concerns. If I would recommend it for my family member or for myself, then I would definitely put it on here if I didn't then I would never talk about it because that's something that I don't want to do so let me know what you guys want the next topic so that I can talk about it and you feel more comfortable essentially what my channel is about is to bring in some topics that are commonly um, asked or commonly wondered about uh, and make it very understandable so that next time you're going to your doctors you have a better understanding even if they don't sit down with you um, which they should but if they don't then you already know what's going on because well a doctor here is telling you <laughs> and then also what I want to do is preventative care really really want to talk about some ways that we can help by preventative care and if you have a good understanding and good knowledge of what's going on then you're more likely to take care of yourself and if you don't know and you're just kind of going about life as you know as uh, as you see it and what you see might not be good so thank you guys once again and I hope to see you in the next video Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button and do share as that will be really helpful. Bye guys.